Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm going to bring a box downtown. The Johnny Air Cargo. I was going to do a video about why so many people are moving out of the city. And, uh... Why the city... Is not totally empty. Because the problem is people are moving out, but a lot of people are moving in. So got a double effect to it you know like just many people moving out this many people moving in it's not like in LA where it's a it seems to be almost an exodus but there definitely is a lot of people moving out of the city without a doubt I mean there's no doubt about it can't deny it I mean that's a fact but because I'm seeing like personal business associates people I know they're leaving that have been here for years people just packing it up and leaving so it is a bit unnerving and I don't know what the outcome will be hard not knowing what the outcome will be because you want to be where you're going to make money and successful and uh, if the city is dying you don't want to be here but I don't see that yet I don't see anything to show that evidence of that I have seen what cities look like when they're dying and New Jersey can give you an example of that I mean there's quite a few cities there that have been dying at certain times you know because of the they had industry there and they lost it. But that was a long time ago. But it's a process that just drags on. You know, like one city that you can definitely see that is just dying and has remained that way is Patterson, New Jersey. And I, and I don't mean to say that against anybody living there because there are some beautiful parts of that city. But it, it is obviously it lost all of its industry and it's just a dying city and it has been for a while and there's a lot of a lot of cities in Pennsylvania that have seen the same outcome but New York is not a dying city by no means you know but it has changed a lot that's that's one thing for sure That, that, that's one that will jump in front of you. On the traffic that I see in New York is not a dying city but what really kind of freaks me out is 
like I'm seeing like city offices, they're open. New York City Housing, the Force, they're all in full swing. Everybody's back. But when I look at these private firms, I just don't understand it. Like they're, they're not back and their offices are still there. And they're quite expensive offices. Like I have a, advertise, a big art advertisement firm with 60 people on Hudson Street and their, their, their office was, was the old Cadillac office. You know, I mean, it's not a cheap office. It's, it's a high-end office. And I just don't know what to say. Like, how long can they do this for? can they maintain this office space that they're holding with no people in it like the one the, 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 the firm that has the old Cadillac office I mean they're uh, basically got two people in the office so I don't I don't really know how long they can do that for. And I don't know what their rent is, but if I had to take a guess, I would think it's somewhere in the range of 20,000 a month. So, and that's being conservative, because this is a big office. I don't want to give their name, but it's a big office, big firm. I just don't see it, how it's possible. Like he's there every day now with the IT guy. The only people in the office is the, is the office manager and the IT guy. Which is weird. And then he said they're trying to get people to come back to the office, but the, they don't want to come back. And then some people have been scolded and reprimanded you need to come back now for two days a week one girl said i can't i'm living in seattle so like how the hell did she she went from working for a company in new york in new york city and she moved to the entire other end of the country like i wish i lived in la but i'm here you know so i'm like I'm just trying to figure out how long this can work for her. You know, I just don't know when this will all just subside. You know, obviously this pay paycheck protection program is, is helping out companies to maintain. They're doing it because they have federal money to keep them going. The question is, you know, how long can they do that? questions that are going to come out later. Like the architectural firm that I do work for here, they, right on uh, 26th Street here, they, there's nobody in the office. Uh, they come in the office a couple days a week, so it's still not surprising. They share the office with another architecture firm, but this firm used to be in Dumbo in a beautiful space. I mean, that, that space sold their jobs because they had an absolutely gorgeous architectural firm space that was all their own. And 
it's sold shop. As soon as somebody went in to their library, they, they were sold. So that was, you know, that, that was just uh, heartbreaking to see them come. Now they're sharing an office with another firm. But it is a nice office. The first one they shared with in the Navy Yard was not the greatest. And there was a lot of conflict between them and the other firm. And nobody, nobody went to the office because the Navy Yard was inconvenient. For most people in the office. Like the, the president didn't even go, not even one time. He wasn't even there. But now that it's on 26th Street again, back in Manhattan, or I shouldn't say back in Manhattan, they were in Dumbo before, but very convenient location. But now that they're in Manhattan, the, the owner is there every week. The president. Which is a good thing. But that's just one instance. Like the the vast majority of the firms that I handle are completely empty. Now there's there's now hands-on businesses are are back in the office. Like there's a HVAC firm in Queens. You know they're they're fully functioning, cutting back a lot, but they're fully functioning. A lot of those big e-bikes they almost look like sport bikes but they're uh they're not but anyway getting back to the point the uh the offices they're empty it, it kind of freaks me out i don't see how it's sustainable it all doesn't make sense so it scares me a little bit For now, I'm staying in the city, though. You know, I'm not, I'm not bailing yet. I don't have any plans to, and my work is here. So, this is where I'm staying. It just worries me, you know, when you see the, the things that you see that don't look sustainable and don't make any sense. Those are the things you have to worry about. Those are the things you analyze and say, why, why is this happening? How does this company with 60 people all working remotely maintain an office space that probably costs 20,000, might be more a month? Obviously they're getting some money from the federal government, which we know. 
but I just don't get it. companies I don't run their books I don't know what their status is so for me to question it is also wrong you know it's just being a nosy body so I'm gonna try not to do that It looks like I'm gonna make this delivery. So I, I would hope that the city would cover and it seems like it is. I mean, you see a lot of people around. It's, the economy is functioning here. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. When you go to Patterson, you don't see that, but people, a lot of people do live there though. And, and I'm sure a lot of people went to Patterson. New Jersey took over as a bedroom community with, with everything. big time as a bedroom community and the pricing really hasn't got that good but pa Patterson definitely took over huge like cause some people just are not going to pay the rent that are being charged in the city they'll take a bus or shuttle bus that go to Patterson New Jersey from here from all parts of Manhattan
So that that aspect has been taken over big time from New Jersey. But I just don't know. You know, now the rents are picking up in New Jersey. It's getting ridiculous. You know, housing prices are insane, even in Patterson. <laughs> like, like, you know, some people might mistakenly go there and look with a realtor, and they're like, "Oh my God, I'm not going to live here." You know. This is a depressing city, no doubt about it. I mean, New York has a lot more going for it, but the pricing is getting people insane. So, but anyway, I'm here for the duration, guys, and uh, it does make good content. And I've, I started this channel to get more ridership in New York because it's a tough town to teach people about riding and what they have to do. So, hopefully, it's helped. See everybody on the next one.